since President Kennedy was shot from this window, the Secret Service, the FBI and the local police have been making their own assessments of the trajectory of the bullets. They lay up there in ambush to shoot with a camera instead of a rifle. Smoothly, a similar open car approached the place where the bullets smashed the president's head. A detective and a policewoman played the parts of the president and Mrs. Kennedy. Speeds and angles had all to be checked because one of the unanswered questions is how could Oswald get off his three shots so quickly and so accurately? There was plenty for the curious to see as they waited at the spot where the president died. In another reconstruction, detectives mounted a film camera on a tripod in the car, and on the next run, with a stake marking the exact angle of impact, you could see the line of flight the murderer's bullets must have taken. No one will ever know what Oswald was thinking, but he was obviously cool enough as he slipped away from the building and began his escape. I followed the route he took to get away from the scene and then back to Elm Street about 500 yards away. It looks as though Oswald was planning to ride on a bus past the scene of the assassination just 20 minutes after he'd pulled the trigger. He got on a bus and took a seat, but he didn't stay aboard long. It wasn't fast enough for him. Thick traffic was holding up the bus, so he leapt off and hurried several hundred yards to the Greyhound bus station. Taxis are in and out all the time here, and he found one quickly. To the driver, Oswald said, take me to 500 North Beckley, and the cab moved off. What do you think happened out there, said the cab driver. But Oswald didn't answer. As they made the journey away from the center of Dallas across a viaduct, Oswald's description was soon to be crackling out over the police radios. He paid off his taxi with a dollar bill and ran back to the house where he lived five nights a week. He rushed in, took off his dark coat, and put on a light one and went out again. His landlady now has a vacancy. A few streets away, Oswald was spotted by a patrol car. He was walking along 10th Street. Dallas policeman J.D. Tippett jumped from the car, and in this quiet road, Oswald shot him down. 20 minutes later, the scene switched to the Texas cinema in a busy shopping area. The cashier, who was upset by the president's death, saw a man go by her window into the cinema. A few minutes later, someone told her to phone the police. And shortly after that, the police sirens wailed and Oswald was dragged from his hiding place in the darkness inside. A president was dead, a policeman was dead, and soon Oswald himself would be dead. <laughs>